The African stories in the diaspora can only be told by Africans and African descendants. On this program, we share the experiences of Africans to educate, inform, and entertain ourselves. Diaspora Digest covers every aspect of the African, from their home culture to the new normal. Make time on this channel with some annoy as he sails to every corner of the world to share with you the African story on Diaspora Digest. Hello people, welcome to Diaspora Digest where I speak to a lot, lot of guys from Africa and African descendants. Today my guest is one guy from Ghana, his name is Lawrence. And I've been hunting to speak to this guy for a period of time whilst I'm on A State campus. Today, I have gotten him. I was just told he was at the cafeteria and he has been looking for me also. Just stay with me. Hey, finally, finally, the big man. I've now seen him. You've been hiding from me. Hey, welcome, bro. How have you been doing? Uh, I've been good. I've been good. I've been good. How's life been? Ah, oh, bad. You've been busy. Very busy. Yeah, because I've I've been on campus for like four hours just trying to yeah, meet I you. Had, I had work and I had school work to deal with, exams and everything. So I've been quite busy. I'm lucky you you, you had to catch me coming out of from there. Yeah. So. So what food do they serve? Bangkun, fufu. Kobe with the wool. Kobe ni abe ju forky. Uh huh. Mm. But nah, they don't. They don't. They don't sell those stuff. Like that. Uh huh. So you miss those food, right? I do. I do miss it, and sometimes you just like try to make it on your own. Do you get the fufu stuff around? It's hard to get the you know the ingredients and everything you need, but. You just have to make it with what you have. Mm, improvise. You gotta improvise. Mm. Improvise with what you have. Wow. So, yeah. But I, I, I'm told the closest you could get food starts from is Memphis. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. You drive an hour from here, Memphis, you can get, there's an African market in Memphis that you can get stuff from. Expensive, but mm -hmm. yeah, you can get stuff, food starts from there to make whatever you want to make. Mm. So how how's life been in 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 a state well, for during this period? First of all, I miss home. Yeah. Mm, what was the last what was the last what was the last time you went home? The last time I was home was if I'm not mistaken, two years ago. Two years. Two or three years ago. Mm. If I'm not mistaken. But yeah. That was the very last time I was home. It was during the Christmas season. Are you hoping to go anytime soon? You can't Anytime, tell. Sometimes I can't tell. I don't know. We just. You are scared of paying the one fifty dollars at the port, <laughs> at airport. No, <laughs> one fifty dollars for it. For COVID test. No, I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm not, not. I'm not worried about COVID. I'm not worried about paying. Uh, it's just you have to do with what you have. You know, going out of this country and coming back it has mm, its complications. Yeah. So you just gotta do with what you gotta just. Mm anyway so i'm glad to meet you you know i've been told there's one Ghanaian guy here and oh. i was like oh when am i going to meet him and finally finally <laughs> oh wow it's good to be to see a brother from another mother though so how's how's the computer science you are a computer science student yeah i'm a computer science uh, bachelor's of art majoring in that mm. um it's going well I would say vast difference when it comes to resource trying to get, you know, thoughts on um, computer science compared to back home. Mm. It's vast difference, but I mean, it's what it is. It's life. You learn from one place, mm. you practice in another place. You know, you move on and you just deal with stuff. But it's it's going well. Mm. Yeah, they got good resources and everything. So. So how many years have you left um, to finish? I've got a year and a half and I'll be done. Mm. Yeah, I've graduated in a year. Any plans for graduate school? After plans for graduate school, not really. I'm just trying to know, 
get into the system and work trying to find some work hopefully mm. excuse me yeah but we're just going with what life puts on the table but mm. definitely you have to have a plan for all of that but that's that's the plan now mm. graduation move on to the next phase of life and just one step at a time mm. but it looks like almost all the guys that i've spoken to from africa into engineering maybe yeah. computer science and it's how the world is moving it's you, you just gotta have that mentality it's how the world is moving now soon everything i mean I'll, i don't have to even say soon it's already artificial intelligence everywhere mm -hmm. now. so it's just the market you move with what the market's got and it's also the passion for it like you're saying somebody has a passion for engineering and all these branches in computer science some of those are the others have passion for international business and you know entrepreneurship and moving along so mm. it's it's just the market for me mm. it's how the market is moving and you come from one of the areas in ghana where tourism is booming so much mm. as a central region Cape Coast, though, yeah mm. so for the purposes for our viewers just share some light on um central region and I've, it's prospects. I've been, I don't recall the last time I was in my hometown, but definitely it's on a pathway when you go to Takrani. That's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. That's where I, that, I mean, sorry, that's where I was born. But definitely I'm from um, Elmina, Cape Coast, besides. But yeah, it's the castles, you know, it, it, it definitely brings back, uh, bring back uh, memories of, you know, slavery, the whole. Gold Coast era, it brings back. So, would you say that the Gold Coast story can be posited if from definitely, like the central region? Definitely, the Gold Coast, the whole Gold Coast story would definitely be posed on um, um, central region. I mean, when you say central region, it's mm. a vast, it's like mm. over you say states, but it's a whole region on itself. So, if you have you know so many branches in the whole central region area. So they are they are fishing community, right? It's a fishing community, and just a fun fact, um, I think the previous, I was the past president of United States, Barack Obama, ex president mm. Barack Obama and Michelle Obama did visit mm -hmm. the Elmina Castle for you know. Mm. And I think recently when they did the year of return. The year of return is one amazing journey that everybody should take if if you're away from home, if you've been away from home for a long time, mm -hmm. myself included. Like we have, the last time I checked, like upon news information that I got, the previous one they did, they had a lot of people go there, both national and foreign. They did go back home, experience the whole African culture. I saw pictures, a whole bunch of information of it. It was it was really amazing. Videos, the whole entertainment, the art craft. It's it's really amazing. Like if you're from Africa, definitely it's a beautiful place to be. Mm. I, I for one, I would say that. Coming from Ghana, my friends over here do ask me like, "Do you plan on settling down over in the United States?" I'm like, "See, you have a beautiful country, but." <coughs> Ghana motherland is is the place for me like mm. 100 like no like I'm definitely setting out back home like everything yes resources acquire resources here and there you don't never know where travel may take you but I don't plan on staying in here for the rest of my life mm. so yeah it is what it is mm. so have you lost your I mean the language the no 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 hey no 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 you know there are a lot of people that when when they get here like they lose everything they lose the mm -hmm. I, I don't know about it. i mean you definitely pick it up you pick the english mm -hmm. accent from mm -hmm. time to time because mm -hmm. when you're trying to speak to someone yeah. you want it to make it clear yeah. and people do ha find it offensive when they go like eh, 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 eh. what are you trying to say mm -hmm. so definitely you pick the english accent but your mother tongue like mm -hmm. that one has can to be, for me I, I, 
mm. fans wherever you're from like yeah the language has to be there mm. especially like for wherever you're from not just Africa but wherever you're from wherever you're from in the country but yeah so that 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 bring that brings me to one of the critical questions that I, I I often ask people when I meet them. Like, you know, usually when you, you get to a different um, environment there are shocks, cultural shocks and whatever. Uh, have you uh, in any way encountered any? I have definitely encountered a couple of, you know, um, stuff that shocks, you may call it, that differs from where I'm from and what I've been introduced to over mm. here. Mm. Like, the very first time I, I learned, like, trying to, like, when you, I mean, I know it's kind of like, not bad in some way, but when you stare at somebody for a long time, mm -hmm. it's it's offensive. It's yeah. offensive if you trying to hack hack somebody like harassment. You have to, like, yeah, consent. Get a consent of a yeah. person. Whereas back home, you can tell you what's up. Like your mm -hmm. the greetings is there, but I mean it's the cultural difference. Like you saying, like it's there. Um, definitely one for a fact. Weather conditions definitely different. Mm. Um, yeah, specific words I use in the English dialect over here. Mm. Sometimes they ask like, "How? Mm. Like, were you taught how to say that?" Mm. Or you just, I'm like, so over here. I was speaking to a friend and we we're like, it was just a broad topic, and he asked me to pronounce hippopotamus. I mean, over here that's how they pro mm. pronounce it, hippopotamus. But the very first time I heard it, I was like, um, hippopotamus. hippopotamus. That wasn't how I mm. was brought mm. up, you know, taught how to say it. Like, hippopotamus. Like, mm. yeah. And you go like, huh? Like, what is that? I'm like, and even, I even, don't blame you. It's yeah. the whole British accent yeah, and the American, American accent. dialect accent and the whole differences and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, the other time I, I spoke to one person and I was like, Coco. And they'll go like, what is Coco? Like, cow cow, you know? So, so those are some of the differences in there. Different words, yeah. words especially, they do have specific pronunciations for mm -hmm. it and spellings so definitely mm -hmm. for, you know, the word for We were colonized by the British, mm -hmm. was colonized by the British, so words, spelling of words, pronunciation of words, that's a vast difference mm -hmm. compared to the American, so. I'm also told that you are the vice president for African Students Association. Yeah, the African Students Association on A State. So, so. I'm the vice president over here, and mm. my colleague Victor, who is from Nigeria, mm. is the president of the association. And we have quite a number of Africans on campus. Not too much, but you know enough mm. to get our, our, ourselves known out there. And mm. it's difficult when you have a very small number of you know people trying but we just got to do it whatever like what we got in we try our best to get known out there we got annual programs that we do but you know first thing for covid we try to just mm -hmm. limit ourselves out there but we still we still doing our stuff and you are an uh, an ra too residence um, or I'm, I'm assistant a CA now. Mm. It's okay see assistant okay I work for the you know housing departments on the university campus okay yeah, it's, it helps mm. get to the exposure, the working experience and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a really, you know, surrounded by good people, mentorships and all of that, they, they really help you. And I think those are some of the things we lack in back home where you are a student on campus and, and still working, working on and campus. having a mentor like a professor somebody or somebody, you, yeah. You, know, you gotta do it this way or this is how we can go through it. Mm -hmm. Out, we 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 have it. I won't say we we have it, but it's how they do it. Mm. They deal with it. That's the problem. Like, and we we, I don't know how to put it, but we kind of. I'm not gonna say because I've been here, so I kind of know everything that's going mm. on. But I would say we kind of lock behind a little bit. If you know, we know how. If we just switch up things try different things i'd say we could because 
we Ghana is a big country. Like yeah. we have amazing people, amazing leaders. I should say, but it's how the process should be done. And I mean, I'm not in that position, so I don't know how mm. they go by. But that's the little I can put on it. But you know, switch it up a little bit, do this a different way, and see the outcome. And but I think one of the things I've seen here is students being able to kind of work at the cafeteria, which doesn't happen back home. Mostly what you see in our cafeterias on campuses are like traditional workers, people who are outsiders working. That's, but yes, a student could work mm -hmm. and go to school at the, well, same, at the time, same time, you know. And it helps mm -hmm. get so they, paid and yep. limits, I mean, reducing financial mm -hmm. difficulties and all that. I would say this, it's a vast difference, like, it's how your whole university or culture and all the structured, structured the architecture whole university development and all that is structured that's what i'm saying if we kind of have like schools colleges universities back home that are structured kind of similar or you know there's nothing wrong with copying from another person mm. and doing it a different way mm. you can you cannot just copy it and do the same thing they're doing copy it put a little style on it and i think one of the uh, challenges how to connect industry with our schools where we can churn out students or who will be doing some form of internship before they before come out they of, come, so that don't you don't have to have the challenge of asking a student to have a four years experience or whatever experience before you get I just got out of school how are you going to ask me for four years experience, experience when I don't have it mm -hmm. that's that's one of the benefits you get from you know America excuse me, yeah. I mean, other um, overseas countries, mm. America, Europe, wherever, they they tend to put the students in that kind of position. They have career fairs, mm -hmm. companies from different you know places. They have this career Come fair. Come offer you. They you take your resume. They tell oh this is good, this is bad. You got to do it this way, and if you meet the requirements. You'll be picked. You 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 have a higher chance of getting picked, getting to do an internship somewhere, mm. and for later, I mean, for future purposes, and it 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 goes a long way mm. for for sure. So aside aside your RA job and then the school and stuff, what do you do for relaxation? Go to the gym, play soccer, um, chill like the way uh, Swabri, <laughs> one guy Swabri says he chills, you know. Um, we do organize ourselves, play volleyball sometimes. Mm. We play soccer, hang out, chill. But you know, some of these things are limited with the airway and the whole COVID situation. Mm -hmm. So people tend to, you know, be reserved. But sometimes you, you just gotta get out, take a stroll, do something. You know, don't just get stuck indoors. The, the, there's a whole lot going on, like mm. virtual events going on. You can just participate. Too. Bunch. Mm. So would you would you advise <clears throat> like fellow Ghanaians or Africans to kind of like come in here steady and so I, it's it's kind of like a one person opinion mm. a one person like decision it's what first you got to take an accountability of what your goal is in life where you set to go you can still stay back home and make money definitely do that but it's just that at the rates which you know the world is going and how fast pace you want it is that's where you get the obstacle in there but definitely you can stay back home in Ghana and just depend on what you're doing and make money off of it mm. you can also travel abroad and some kind of knowledge mm. some hand skill work practice I would say definitely we like a lot of practice mm -hmm. we like we like the practical stuff we do the knowledge, theory, knowledge, theory, knowledge theory, book, theory. book, 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 and then we don't do any field work. So that becomes a problem when, when this person is like all book, and you take the person to the field, and it's like, I mean, the book is like we do it this way. So mm. they, that's why most companies tend to pick people from with, say, um, overseas background, even mm. though they're from the same, which is bad. Even though sometimes you can meet someone that is not overseas exposure, but they got they got a hand skill work. Mm. We definitely do like, but it's like I'm saying, it's 
it's a one person decision you got to make that decision if you have to mm. travel abroad and find you know mm. what works best for you oh anyway i think it's too late that um, i need to you, you are tired and i need to allow you go it's rest okay. and it's weekend too you know it's been awesome speaking to you i know i've been just chasing you around and you've been very busy but you just made time for me to speak to you and thank you so much for your time god bless you god bless and god bless you. africa and god bless ghana yeah i would say thank you for the platform you're giving me to talk and it's a really good interview mm. getting people exposure to where they come from just remember them mm. where they're from and yeah it's a pretty, i appreciate that thank all right you very much. all right so just subscribe to our youtube channel it's just down there Hit that, like hit, hit, hit that like button and Slam on it. yes, follow. Watch and follow. Stream. We're coming out with more interactive, more educative, more informative interviews. And not just students, but we are coming closer. We are closer to you than you ever thought of. Ciao.